Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I of course am Carl and I am back with you guys today for another episode of Vacuum Exposition. Um, now, uh, as many of you know, we are in our Resto Month or Restoration Exposition Month series that I decided to do for June. Um, for those that haven't been watching, I have been uh, going over some machines that, uh, well, I have been wanting to give them their moment uh, in the, uh, the limelight as it, as it is because they have gone through a restoration of some sort. Now, all of my machines generally have to go through uh, some form of cosmetic restoration, whether they're almost brand new or you pulled them out of a dumpster the other day. That's just the case. They have to go through it, um, mostly to make sure that they're all clean and whatnot, you know, uh, lice, fleas, those types of things do like to go and sit in old vacuum cleaner bags. So this is a necessary project that has to happen with anything you bring in that is used to clean up messes, particularly stuff that is in the floor. So I wanted to go over a few machines. I've gone over um, one that was a creation of my late friend Jay. Um, another one was a really cool Kenmore twin fan from the 80s that uh, was one of Jay's that unfortunately, uh, well, needed some help. Um, we also uh, looked at, uh, well, a commercial machine that I always wanted to kind of go over. Um, so we looked at some really, really cool stuff over uh, the past few weeks. Um, and I definitely encourage anybody that hasn't seen any of that to totally go back and look at it. Um, restoration is never an easy project. There always is some kind of a hang up, a hitch, or um, a sub process of the process that uh, takes a little bit longer than you'd like. Um, and oftentimes you can get restoration projects that are done in a day, but sometimes you have them that last weeks, months, years even trying to complete um, if parts are not always available. Today, no different. This one took me approximately three or four weeks, I want to say, mostly because it needed a lot of cosmetic help. Um, running wise, it ran pretty good, but still needed a lot of help cosmetically. But anyways, let's get on to our video for today and take a look at another really cool one. All right, so what do we have here? What we're looking at is a Hoover commercial vacuum cleaner known as the Guardsman, as you can see by the front. Now, the Guardsman. The Guardsman name, um, essentially, uh, being the top of the line commercial vacuum cleaner that Hoover offered for quite a many years, um, was a very, very durable machine. They uh, were used, of course, all through office buildings, uh, all through any uh, retail stores they were seen, as well as they were able to be bought privately from Hoover as well. Uh, and I'll even show a picture of the ad for it right here. Now, this particular machine might look a little different from that ad, although it looks very similar in mine as well as other people's opinions. Now, what we're looking at uh, in particular is a creation of mine. This particular one is a Model 4313. For Hoover as well as vacuum cleaner fans out there, I know that you know that this is not the same machine. The reason why I say that is because this started out as uh, a later model, uh, and I'll show a picture of a later model right here. As you can see, it is quite a bit different than what we were looking at. Certain things are missing, certain things are gone, um, or different designs. So what I decided to do with this particular machine is I already have a 4313 in my collection. I don't intend on getting rid of that. It's a very special machine to me. But this particular machine came in as a duplicate. Um, so duplicates, of course, you get them in, you see which one between the one you have and the one that you just got is better. Maybe you rob some parts, throw them on, you know, play some musical bags or whatnot. Uh, and then, you know, you keep the really nice one for yourself and you maybe sell off or trade the other one. 
that was kind of the case with this one. Now, um, I got this one from my friend Philip Muller, as we've talked about in the past, as well as been in a video or so. He got it from uh, another collector at a convention um, that didn't intend on taking it home, so it needed to be gone before he went back to his hometown. Um, so after some wheeling and dealing between him and Philip, uh, Philip came away with this. Philip, not wanting it to go in the trash, uh, kept it, even though he does have uh, at least one other in his collection that I, I uh, as I recall, is almost perfect. So he offered this to me and said, hey, do you want this? And gave it to me when I saw him in Kansas. Now, I will show a before picture of it right here. As you can see, it looks quite a bit different than what we have now. Um, that is for a very good reason. Now, the very first ad I showed you had the very first edition of the Guardsman. Um, it lacked or had different aspects of it that the later model did not have um, or had. So one or two big things uh, that the earlier model had that you probably noticed was one, the bag. The bag on the first model, I believe, was a dump bag, um, or you could put a paper bag system in it. However, it was a cloth material uh, and had this big pad on the back, uh, as well as the letters of heavy duty, as you saw. Um, this did not come with that, as you saw from that picture. It came with a later replacement vinyl, checker print, type of bag that you know you usually get from a vacuum shop um, which not surprising commercial machines they oftentimes had replacement parts on them just to keep them running until well they got something new eventually which is definitely what happened with this one this one uh, was used for quite a long time before it was finally retired uh, and then found by this other collector um, and then traded off to Philip and he gave it to me um, now, in addition to the bag, of course, um, this machine would have originally had a red kind of checkerboard print, as you probably saw. Um, it also had a Hoover emblem up here on the base. Unfortunately, um, well, for me, that's not very easy to find unless I rob it off of a whole other vacuum and glue an emblem on. Um, but even still, the uh, earlier Guardsman had a hole that was cut for the emblem this later one did not because they instead put the word hoover on the headlight lens now that was on there however i got rid of it um, in order to make it look more like the earlier version uh, it also had a switch cover switch that was on here um, that was broken and many pieces were gone so i took that off and left it like that but what i have now is a very similar looking Guardsman to the original. Um, like I said, I already have this particular model, but I wanted to make the original because I have the celebrity, the canister that was in that ad, uh, to go with it, and I have always wanted to make the complete set. Um, and when I do a video on the celebrity, I'll get all of my Guardsmans out and we'll look at all of them together um, because I do have quite a bit of uh, commercial Hoovers um, outside of the Guardsman series. But Either way, I wanted to bring this thing back to the way it was from the factory in the 70s. This particular model uh, would have come out in the early 80s time frame um, and was considered the most popular being as it is all red and visually looks way better with the red bag than a gray bag, obviously. Um, but you did have a lot of aspects on the original model that did, uh, well, pop a little bit better. You had the red bumper, you had the red hood. You would have had a red emblem, Hoover, obviously. You would have had the red lettering for heavy duty on the bag, uh, as well as a red handle grip that uh, we'll see in the run demo. Um, but sometimes that's how we have to do this in order to get a particular model. Um, you know, sometimes you have to make it in order to have it because they are so hard to find. Uh, Hoover Guardsmen are not rare. They are uncommon, I will say. Um, but the earlier editions that this is modeled after are very, very hard to find, especially in any original shape. Bags, usually gone. Emblem, could be gone or scraped or destroyed because it is commercial rated. Um, even this one's headlight lens, you can see, has a big crack in the middle. 
most likely from running it into something, obviously. Um, and it's got some scratches and everything on the on the hood, but either way, you know, after a good polish and cleanup, this thing came out really well. I did get the motor all serviced up, so it runs really good, as well as has, of course, a headlight that lights up. But um, the bag is what really took the time. Now, I did take the bag that came on this, the vinyl bag that was on it, just the white and cream checkerboard colored one. Um, it was in decent shape. I will say that it was in pretty good shape for what it was. Of course, it was a replacement probably done in the 90s, early 2000s time frame, so uh, it didn't have a lot of wear compared to the machine itself. But I had some uh, paint that matched kind of the gray of that uh, cloth one uh, and using some gaff tape uh, as well as um, some um, letter decals from Amazon, I was able to replicate the heavy duty wording as well as the patch that goes behind here to protect the bag. Uh, when the backing goes up and down with the handle. Um, it did need a new plug. It had a big, what, uh, red on it medical grade plug put on it. So I put on a regular gray three prong, uh, which is what it would have originally had. So um, aside from that, I did get rid of the Hoover lettering so that it made the headlight lens look like the earlier Guardsman. The only things left to do on this machine that I have is I need to find some white um, height adjustment and handle release pedal caps. Um, they have these little foot pedals on the back and um, the later ones came with black, the earlier ones would have come with white. So one of those things I gotta find eventually, but not in any rush. It is, of course, as done as I can get it right now. It may take me a few years to even find those parts or maybe I'll just have to make them eventually. Um, but I don't shy away from that. The bag honestly was really fun to make. Um, once you have like the right color, that's what brings everything together. Um, and the key is to, you know, when it's still drying, get those decals on because that's almost permanently going to be attached because the paint will dry to the decals. So all of that will now never come off ever unless you well, cut it off, I suppose. But uh, why would anybody want to do that at this point? But anyways, I think it came out really, really well. Um, I've had a few Hoover experts take a look at it, and they have all said that it looks really, really nice compared to what it came from. Um, and the point that I want to make before I, I, I move on is this machine was basically destined for the dump. Um, I was even considering throwing it away when I got it back just because of how much work I would have had to do to it in order to get it looking you know, nice again. Um, when I was inspired by a fellow collector that had found another guardsman recently, um, same model, but uh, it had a bag that read heavy duty on it. And I said, well, you know, that looks like the, uh, the heavy duty bag that would have come with the original one. And I started thinking it wouldn't be too hard to replicate something like that. Um, paint, some gaff tape, like I said, and, and, uh, you know, some lettering, and you have yourself a fairly original looking bag. So that's what I set out to do and that's what I ended up doing. And now it runs really well. Uh, I took that cap off so it looks like the original type switch, um, the original headlight lens. So everything looks visually close enough for me to put it next to my commercial guardsman and be happy with what, uh, what I got out of it. So, Let's get on to our run demo and see how this thing performs. All right, everybody, we've got the Guardsman all plugged in and ready to rock. So let's get this thing rolling and see how it does on the floor. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our little exposition uh, on the 
late 70s, early 80s, Hoover Guardsman. Um, it is a really cool thing to be able to do a project like this and see it come out uh, as well as I can. So I'm really happy to finally have this one done. Like I said, it did take me a few weeks to get it done, um, mostly because just waiting for, well, paint to dry, essentially. Uh, paint on vinyl, by the way, if you're looking to do it, it does take you about three or four days to let it finally uh, dry, um, even with the heat or in the sunlight or anything like that. Um, fortunately, not the easiest thing, but anyways, this machine is a really, really fun machine to use just because it is so durable, uh, and you can tell that it is really like beating the carpet and getting that grit and grime out of it. So um, again, another really cool upright that I'm really happy to have in my collection. Um, I wasn't going to keep it. I was going to get rid of it or do whatever it took to sell it off to somebody else. But um, now, you know, after I put all the work into it, it looks really cool. It looks the way I wanted it to look. So um, it is definitely going to be sticking around and going in a guardsman display. So Thank you all again for watching. Of course, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you again next week. So have a great rest of your day.